In this video, we'll be looking at how to graph the truncus, as well as how different transformations affect the graph. So firstly, the truncus is a graph with the equation y is equal to 1 over x squared. And that's its power or basic form. Obviously, once there's transformations, it can change and look, may look something like this. However, it still has the general truncus shape. And yeah. So what does it look like? So the truncus, as I said, has the equation y is equal to 1 over x squared. So first you can see it's like an inverse uh, equation with regards to its 1 over something. So it's like the hyperbola. So it's going to have a relatively similar shape, but a bit different. So if I say what happens when x is equal to, let's say, 10? Well, that means y is going to be 1 over 100. When x is equal to 100, y is going to equal 1 over 100 squared. So you can see that when x approaches infinity, y approaches 0. So that means it's going to come down like that. What happens when x is, let's say, 1 on 10? y is going to equal 1 over 1 on 10 squared. Now 1 on 10 squared is 1 over 100. 1 over 100 is equal to 100. So it's going when x approaches 0, y is going to approach infinity. So we're going to have something that looks like this. So that this is very similar to 1 over x, as you can see. But because it's squared, it's going to be a lot steeper. But you don't have to do it exactly to scale unless you're drawing both of them. But yeah, it has this general shape, as I said uh, with the video about the hyperbola. I normally draw the arrows and then draw it down and across. The main things to note are that it has to look like it's approaching. You can't draw it like that. That would be wrong. You have to make sure that it never dips back up. It always goes down. And cutting it off a bit earlier or not drawing arrows to make sure that occurs is fine. So that's for the positive values of x. So what happens when there's negative values of x? Does y, is y going to become negative or is it going to stay positive. So if x is, let's say, negative 1, then y is equal to 1 over negative 1 squared, which is equal to 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. When x is negative 10, y is going to be 1 over negative 10 squared, and it's going to equal 1 over 100, etc. So when x approaches negative infinity, then y is going to approach 0. And then when x is really small, so let's say x is negative 0.001, then y is going to be a really large number as 1 over that number squared. And when a fraction is squared, it just becomes a smaller number. So therefore, when x approaches 0, y approaches infinity. And it doesn't approach negative infinity, it just approaches infinity because of this squared term. Because y over 1 over x squared, the squared turns whatever the x value is, even if it's negative, to a positive number. So we're actually going to get the exact same thing on the other side. So those two should be symmetrical. Now due to the approaching, because this uh, graph is approaching the x-axis very closely and it's going to keep on going approaching, approaching, that means there is an asymptote. Along this line, we need to draw in an asymptote for when y is equal to 0. So that's for when y is equal to 0. And then when x gets smaller and smaller, y starts to approach infinity. But it never touches the x-axis, uh, the y-axis, sorry. And that's because if x equals 0, it's undefined. So that goes down, down, down. And note that at the moment there is no x or y intercept. So therefore that is when x is equal to 0. So we have two asymptotes and we have this general shape. And then if you remember the hyperbola was on that side. So the shape is a bit uh, closer in and steeper. And then it's on both sides. So symmetrical. So what happens when we dilate this shape? So if we have the, the general shape here, the truncus, and then if you'd have to draw in the asymptotes as well, 
I'll just leave this out for now. Then you could dilate it like that, or like this. So then we think, well, if we're going from the x-axis and replacing y with y on a, so we're dialing it by a factor of a. If this occurs, we get that over 1 over x squared, therefore y is a over x squared. So similar to the hyperbola, this would then be a is equal to, let's say, 3, the original a equals 1, that could be an a equals, let's say, a third, a is equal to a third. So they correspond to either side, so you have to change both. And then you can also find like the 1.11, 1 .11, find out what happens when a is equal to 3, well then it's 3 on 1, so that point here then becomes 1, 3, and you can see why that occurs, and this point here would become 1, 1 on 3. So, ref reflections. So we have this graph here. Firstly, we can see that it does look symmetrical. However, we're, if we want to check the symmetry, what we can do is we can check that it, if it's reflected in the y-axis, it will stay the same. And then you can see that if you reflect it in the y-axis and these are both symmetrical, then it won't affect the equation. So we have this, so this is y is 1 on x squared. Then we reflect it in the y-axis. So that means we need to change x with negative x. That means we get y is equal to 1 over negative x squared. And due to this squared term, we just get y equals 1 over x squared, because negative x squared is just x squared. So we get the same equation. So that means reflecting in the y... has no effect. And if you go back to, let's say, a quadratic equation, so this is a quadratic, then we can see that we could check also the symmetry of this one, and we find that it is symmetrical due to this x squared term as well, because negative x squared is equal to x squared. Be careful though, if it is, remember that negative x cubed is equal to negative x cubed there still is a negative there because it's cubed. So it's only for the even power, so 2, 4, etc. Now, it could be reflected uh, in the uh, x-axis instead. So let's say that's translation. So what happens if it's reflected in the x-axis? Well, that means we're going to have a shape graph like this. And then it's going to go down here. So what will the equation look like? We'll replace y with negative y, and that means we get negative y equals 1 over x squared, so y is equal to 1 over x squared. Then, oh, so negative 1 over x squared. And you can think about that. So every value where y was positive, you have just replaced it with a value down here. So all the x values and all the shapes will be the same. You're just moving every single point to negative. And as every single y value before was positive, so before we had y is always greater than zero, not equal, but greater than zero. Now with the green, we have y is always less than zero. So moving on to translations. So here we have an equation where there's two translations. We need to work out what they are and then how this changes the graph. So firstly, if we rearrange this, we get y minus three is equal to 1 over x minus 2 squared. If you remember the original basis equation, we have y equals 1 over x squared. So from that, we can determine that y has changed to y minus 3, and x has changed to x minus 2. So that means it's been shifted up 3 and moved across 2. So looking at this, we know that when x is equal to 2, the graph is undefined. When x is just above 2, then it's going to be a small number squared and then 1 over that number, so y is going to approach affinity. If you look at it from the other angle as well, you can see that. So we know that x is equal to 2 is going to be an asymptote. So here, we can put there. And that makes sense, because when you're shifting the graph to across, then the asymptote is also going to shift. So x is equal to 2. And that is a 2 shift a lot. Then... The, what happens when this term here approaches zero? As we, we've already shown previously that this term can approach zero, 
when x goes to infinity. So this will, when x goes to infinity or negative infinity, then we know that this term here will approach 0. So that means y will no longer approach 0, but rather will approach 3 because of this plus 3. So that means we're going to get an asymptote at plus 3. So I always find that drawing the asymptote first is probably the best idea if you are certain about the asymptotes. And then we can think, well, are there any reflections or translations? So the equation was 1 over x minus 2 squared plus 3. Now there weren't any reflections or dilations, so I think that the graph is going to look like this, like dot up like that, and then it will look so something like this. So to check this, I'll look for the y-intercept. So I'll let x equal 0. That means I'll get y is equal to 1 over 4 plus 3. And that makes sense, because you have 3 and then you're adding 4. So that's going to be uh, 1 over 4 plus 12 over 4, because that's 3. So that's 13 on 4. So, and can I, I can check if there's any x-intercept, so let y equal 0. And I find that there isn't because the negative and this has to be, this term here has to be positive. That's already positive, so there's no way that you can have a negative uh, z zero y value. So this graph I've shown is correct. So I can draw in the graph here. I've done the asymptotes. Make sure you do it sort of in pencil just in case you make any mistakes. And then I'll need to label this point here. So that's 0, 13 on 4.